Okay, this question is about emergency procedures. Quite a difficult one because it's 20 points in total uh, if you add up both parts, parts A and B. Part A, five points. I'm not gonna to spend too long on part A. I'm gonna spend most of this video going through part B. But uh, just quickly on part A, why do emergency procedures need to be developed? Five marks available. What you need to think about I think, or what might be useful here to think about, I think, is the three main drivers for health and safety. So there's going to be moral reasons, legal reasons, and financial reasons. Yeah, just use the that familiar framework of moral, legal, and financial arguments, uh, which should see you right for the first part of the question. It's the second part of the question, though, part B, that is obviously where most of the points are available uh, and that is what could have contributed to the failure of the emergency arrangements when dealing with the recent incident the recent accident sorry and a, a note to say that you should support your answer using relevant information from the scenario one thing i want to highlight before we get cracking is the question is what could have contributed to the failure of the emergency arrangements when dealing with the recent accident that's worth highlighting because what I tend to be seeing a lot of people do with this is it's as if they're if it's as if you're answering the question what could contribute to the failure of emergency arrangements so it's very generic and general whereas if that's what Nibosh wanted to ask you that's what they would have asked you but they haven't they've asked you something different they've actually put the words when dealing with the recent accident on the question. So that should give you a clue that this, the answer to this question needs to be very focused in on the events of the recent accident. And you'll see that when we get into it. A framework I recommend, and I've spoken about this in other videos, is to think about the four P's in no particular order, people, place, plants, and procedures. And the last time I made a video that featured this, I think I called it the grid system. Uh, it was to do with a safe system of work. So I used these four P's and then before, during, and after in terms of things to consider when developing a safe system of work. This is emergency procedures. So I'm gonna just shorten that down to things to consider before and during. What we can do is basically go back to the scenario and start reading through and highlighting things. You'll see that I've already highlighted a few things here. So hope you can see this okay. So you're told that quite a lot of people have received first aid training, but it was a long time ago and many of those trained have since left the organization. So let's get that out of the way. So in terms of people, there's a lack of training. What I'm gonna do here is just make notes here to sort of pop, populate this grid. So just to act as prompts, because what I'm doing here is I'm constructing my answer, I'm building it. Um, so I'm not writing in what I'm actually gonna put in my answer. This is just to provide some structure. So uh, I'm just gonna put first aid training, you know, the lack of it. That's something that could have contributed to the failure of the emergency procedures when dealing with the recent accident. Going back to the scenario, pull that in. Also in that bit that I've highlighted, it says, other than that, there is not much in the way of training because the directors feel it is wasting working time. Now, what I'm gonna do here is just make another reference to sort of training in general because the scenario specifically mentions that there's been a lack of first aid training. Okay, that's fair enough. But I also want to make an inference that there's been a lack of training generally because of the director's attitude towards health and safety being a waste of time. So I think there's been a lack of training, not just in first aid, but there's been a lack of training in basically everything, including emergency situations, which we'll come on to in a bit. Does it say that explicitly in the scenario that the workers have not been trained in dealing with emergency scenarios? No, it doesn't say that explicitly, but I am making what is referred to as a logical inference 
from information that I am presented with from the scenario. So I am inferring the fact that there's been a general lack of training on emergency procedures and I'm using information from the scenario to make that inference. I uh, hope that makes sense. Back to the scenario, another bit I've highlighted is you find several completed risk assessments for the ovens and other machinery, but they are very out of date. That's, this is in procedures, so no risk assessments or risk assessments out of date. And that kind of acts as a little bit of a prompt. So if there's no risk assessments, again, I'm using logical inference here because what often comes out of risk assessments is safe systems of work so there's probably no safe systems of work there's probably no permit to work system there's probably no methods for confined for working in confined spaces no procedures for it again just to repeat myself does it say all that explicitly word for word in the scenario. Well, it does mention that there's no up-to-date risk assessments, but the rest of it, I'm, re I'm inferring from information that I'm provided with. I'm using the fact that there's no up-to-date risk assessments to infer that from what I'm reading in the scenario, I'm, in I'm inferring that there's no safe systems of work, there's no permits to work, there's no confined spaces. By now, um, this is, I think this is question seven, you'll be more than familiar with the scenario to know that these are reasonable things to infer um, from the information provided. Um, other highlights that I made, once the workers had entered the oven, they soon realized it was too hot. Then the next bit that's highlighted, they were unable to get the attention of their colleagues outside the oven. So during, this is during the emergency. So you could say that the, the oven not fitted with alarm. And you could say there's no, in procedures, no system for raising the alarm. They eventually managed to alert them by shouting for help. The colleagues tried to get them out of the oven, but they did not know how to do this. So in terms of training, didn't know how to get them out. Back to the scenario, they didn't know how to do this or locate how far they were inside the oven. Didn't know how to get them out or even locate them. Everyone was frantically trying to help, but there seemed to be no one in charge to take control of the situation. So this is again to do with people. So during, there was nobody in charge to take control of the incidents, aka no incident controller. Back to the scenario, there was a delay in getting them out. So I'm going to put that into procedures. If there were proper procedures in place, there would not have been a delay in getting them out. Back to the scenario, there was no way to reverse the conveyor belt. So the workers had to forcibly pull off barriers. So that's to do with plant. So there was no way to reverse conveyor in emergency. And then this sort of Thing, this sort of stuff that's being talked about now in the scenario is very suggestive of the fact that there are no safe systems of work, no emergency procedures at all. So no emergency procedures developed. There's no general training in how to enter confined spaces. There's no training been provided in the, the proper use of permits to work. There's no training provided in safe systems of work. You know, there's no training provided for, you know, getting people out and, you know, emergency procedures. If there are no emergency procedures, there can't be any training for those emergency procedures. So all of this, as I said, I'll say it again, it's all being inferred from the scenario. This is where a lot of marks can be available on these types of questions, is you making logical inferences using the information that you're provided with. Back to the scenario, workers had to forcibly pull off barriers and side panels to help them escape. Both workers who entered the oven suffered serious burns. Workers at the scene were not first aid trained. So again, this first aid training rears its head again during the 
incident. Another thing that's just sort of sprung to mind when I was talking about emergency procedures is, is no one called the ambulance that I'm aware of. So at this point, what have we got? It looks all a bit of a mess, but we've got enough now to start building an answer. You know, point on first aid training, general training, two points. Then the fact that there's you know no risk assessments no training provided in safe systems of work, no training provided in permit to work, no training, no training provided in confined spaces. Workers didn't know how to get people out of the oven or even to locate them. Nobody in charge to take control of the incidents. The fact that nobody knew what they were doing because they hadn't been trained in first aid hampered things during the uh, incidents. Um, the oven is not fitted with any sort of alarm, probably due to the fact that the risk assessment was out of date or this is the sort of thing that a risk assessment would cover. No way to reverse the conveyor in an emergency. Again, this is something that a proper risk assessment would pick up on. There's no alarm, uh, no system for raising the alarm, no way to communicate with workers inside the oven. Uh, there was a delay in getting them out because of that lack of communication. There's no emergency procedures that have been developed in the first place. So again, you could say that there's no training available for the workers haven't been trained in emergency procedures or dealing with incidents of this kind. Uh, an ambulance hadn't been called. So there's more than enough there to start. And you know, you could you could carry on building stuff in. Uh, reading through the scenario again and sort of picking up on more stuff, building it in, using this grid structure to kind of organise your, your thinking. And at this point, then you can take this and then write it in its in your own words. Don't copy and paste anything. Put it in your own words into the answer box and expand as appropriate. And then Bob's your uncle. You've got yourself... Your 15 points if you can come up with 20 write 20 in same with part a there's five points available for part a but i don't think it would be too much of a stretch for you to be able to think of at least 10 things 10 reasons why emergency procedures needed to be developed if you can think of 10 write 10 in because you're not going to be marked down for any of them you don't get marks taken away from you so if you can think of 10 for part A, which is worth five points, by all means, write 10 in. If you can think of 20 for part B, write 20 in. Anyway, I hope that has made sense. The biggest takeaway I think that I want to repeat is to, well, two, the question is very specifically about what contributed to the failure of emergency procedures in this incident, not just in general, i.e. it's not asking what, in general contributes to the failure of emergency procedures. It's about this incident and so everything needs to be very tightly linked to the scenario and you are going to have to, to get the 15 points that are available for part B, use a lot of logical inference to get you those 15 marks.